What's good guys, my name is Oleg Nikitin and you're watching No Limits On, the channel about the privilege of being a freelancer, tips and pieces of advice about motivation, personal growth, gear, tech reviews and many more. And today we're discussing Calories Browse software and uh, it's on my Sony A7S III. So shall I throw away my DJI Ronin S? Actually no, because it's a pretty awesome software feature, but we actually don't get the maximum out of it and here is why. First of all, you do not have the gyroscopic data in S and Q mode and 4K 120 mode, and also you don't get it in active steady shots and in standard steady shot, it doesn't work properly. Here's the example. It does contain the gyroscopic data, but it works inappropriately and you still do get shaky footage. So the only way to get this gyroscopic data and to stabilize it in calories browse is to record with steady shot off. So let's move on to the software itself. It's a pretty straightforward program. It's, uh, you know, pretty okay and it's uh, kind of intuitive. And I really got used to it in, I don't know, five or 10 minutes of usage. But unfortunately, you can only stabilize and export one file at a time. So I shot around 30 files of 4K 25p and 50p in XAVC S 10 bit, S Log 3. And it took me around one hour to stabilize and export all the files. And I had to be near the computer because every one or two minutes I had to choose another file and export this one. But I could rename the files, so I added ST before the actual file number, and it was much easier for me to understand which file is which. Throughout this process, the Catalyst Browse crashed two times, and I had to reboot it and start once again. Also, after exporting all the stabilized files, I found that four files had some green pixel. It was, I don't know, kind of a crashed or a glitch pixel. So just a green screen for one frame. And I found out that I was using the SD card through my card reader and stabilizing and exporting from Catalyst Browse straight from the SD card. And when I put the files onto my computer and did this once again, it was completely fine. Also, I found a pretty weird issue because the stabilized files from Catalyst Browse have some magenta shift and it's a pretty obvious shift towards magenta and if I apply the same color correction the files look different. So if you mix and match the files that are stabilized in Catalyst Browse and that are not, they will have slightly different colors and you'll have to kind of tweak a little bit to match the colors properly. And yeah, I do like the colors without Catalyst Browse exporting the stabilized file more. The Catalyst Browse crops in a little bit to stabilize your footage better and I found that 1.1 crop, 1.25 crop is okay. It's related to 90% in 1.1 crop to 75% in 1.25 crop. So you lose a pretty big amount of pixels there. So keep that in mind if you do need to keep the pixels the 4K in true resolution, you just need to use your normal stabilizers like Ronin S or the inbuilt active mode not to lose too much resolution. And here where the things get a little tricky, the shutter speed. When you use the proper shutter speed, 25p you get 1 50th of a shutter or 50p you get 1 100th of a shutter, it doesn't work in Catalyst Browse. You get some weird halos and artifacts and it just doesn't look good. So your goal is to make the shutter speed shorter, for instance 1 hundredth of a second when you shoot 25p or even 1 2 50th when you shoot something very intense like you're running or something. I found that the best shutter speed is always over 1 1 2 50th, such a tough thing to say the shutter speeds and something like 1 400th is actually even better for especially something very dynamic like riding from a car or, I don't know, running with a gimbal or even without a gimbal. One more thing to consider is that the Calidus Browse does not help you to stabilize the up and down motion of your camera. So if you walk like so, boom, 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 you won't stabilize it completely. But it's much more efficient when you stabilize something with panning or even tilting like so, or rolling, how do you call this?
And when you do pair the gyroscopic data from Sony A7S III, by the way, the gyroscopic data can be recorded to Sony ZV-1, FX6, FX9, so the more Sony cameras are going to have this feature, you get some incredible uh, stabilization. So you use your gimbal and the gyroscopic data and catalyst browse helps you to eliminate the micro jitters, especially when you're running. So for me, this is a perfect combination to use with a gimbal if you don't care about your short shutter speeds. So if you're okay with using one four hundredth of a second and you're running or it's some kind of a car chase scene or something, it's a great, great choice. So what are the use cases of this gyroscopic data and catalyst browse software? The first thing that comes to my mind is that you don't have a gimbal for some reason, you forgot it at home, you didn't buy it, or maybe you rent it to your friend and you got some, you know, extremely fast uh, shootout and you just cannot take it back before the shoot. You can use the camera itself with the stabilization off and then stabilize it in catalyst browse but use the short shot as speed for sure and the very wide angle lens if you need a wide shot because it will be cropped in dramatically maybe dramatically maybe not really dramatically so this is the first case the second case is that you want to have your gimbal shots even more stable and you don't care about the short shutter speed and you can even run with it you can hang it out of out of the car or something so if you are okay with the short shutter speed it's just perfect and the third scenario is when you're planning to work on a 1080p timeline and you don't care about losing the 4k resolution and you're still okay with the short shutter speeds you can use it properly actually and get some amazing results even shooting handheld as you saw in the footage that I'm showing you. So what is my choice, what is my verdict? Actually, I'm going to be using my camera as usual, so I'll be using the standard steady shot and my active steady shot, my gimbal, monopod, tripod, so I'll get in camera as stable as possible. But then I do know that I do have this feature and for some specific shots, like hanging a gimbal out of a car, shooting a car chase scene or running with a gimbal very fast, and I do know that I'm okay with the short shutter speed, I'll be using this feature. And I prefer to do have this feature than I don't have it. And we're moving on to the quote of the episode. Every change is a menace to stability. Aldous Huxley. And the question of the episode, guys. What do you think about the callous browse and gyroscopic data in Sony cameras? Is it useful? Will you use one? Or maybe it's just, you know, another feature that is in there, but it's not really usable. So share your thoughts in your comment section below. And actually, if you do like the content on my channels, here is the second one on Russian. Maybe you do speak Russian, who knows? And uh, you can hit the like and subscribe buttons or bottles, as I said before in my <laughs> previous videos. I do appreciate this, guys. It really helps a lot. And I hope you do enjoy this content. This was Oleg Nikitin and No Limits On. Take care, guys. See you in the next video. Bye.